Good afternoon, Pastor David. Hi, John. Welcome, everybody, to a random moment with Pastor David Unfiltered. You know, Pastor, last night's uh, Bible study was amazing uh, as you were teaching us out of Ephesians chapter 4 to walk worthy. And, you know, when you were sharing about last night, you were given the... Comp and I've read Ephesians many times, and, and it spells it out, the five ways to walk worthy, right there, right underneath it. And, and I really realized, like, it's like, wow. And it made me begin to think about your... Uh, message at Sunday. I have the privilege of having your notes already and want to tease out some things as on Thursdays we want to talk about what's going to come up on Sundays and Tuesdays we do current events. But you know Jesus has been teaching a valuable lesson to his disciples. They have been arguing about who's the greatest in the kingdom. Uh, three of them went to the Mount of Transfiguration and the others were down and so I can imagine that some felt they had this special relationship with Jesus and almost to a point where look at me and and, uh, and Jesus brings, starts to share with them the, the lesson of humility. He brings in a child and says, you must be like this. And, uh, and last night when you were talking about walking worthy uh, and looking here at your notes, I wanted to ask you, is there a heart of competition in ministry? Oh, there most certainly is. There's most certainly the, at least the, um, the possibility of it. And there is most definitely the reality of it that does happen, you know, because we live in a commercial world. We live in a, a world where the product, um, in terms of what we're producing, is very often intended to draw attention and thus many customers, and etc. And so the church in many ways can be treated as if we have a product and that in order for us to be successful there needs to be a lot of consumers right so what we do is we begin a competition amongst ourselves uh, and and then people are always willing to go along with that john and say oh i go to this church here because it, well it's such a big church and compared to yours which is such a small church and all of that i'll never forget i was in a um a local store and a woman <laughs> approaches me this is a little while ago now, and it's, but I'll never forget how she approached me, and she said, uh, Hi, Pastor David, and I recognized her, but I hadn't seen her for a while, so I said, Hi, how are you? She says, Fine, and I always know when somebody has left the church just the way they approach me, right? <laughs> so she says, I went to your church for a long time, your fellowship for a long time, you know, I said, well, Yeah, she goes, but I, I now go to the big church. And when she said that, I, I got puzzled, you know, because nobody had ever said something like that to me. I'd never heard that kind of phrase as it was describing the place that they attend. And, I, and so I, I honestly was puzzled, John. I looked and I shook my head and I said, I'm sorry. I, I, I don't know what you're, what, you're what, are you, what are you talking about? Oh, and then she tells me the fellowship that she attends. And I, I just thought to myself, how sad that in in in, uh, in in so many ways she could have mentioned where she's going and I already had a sense that she had no longer participated with us and all but she chose to to refer to it in a way that just once again it just showed me the merchandising mentality that people sometimes can have now with that said yeah there is competition there 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 was at the beginning when the men were arguing amongst themselves who was the elder, who was the leader, who was the greater. And Jesus said, what was it that you were, um, you know, disputing with one another <laughs> along the way? What were you arguing vehemently with, with passion about? Because they had a uh, three-day walk that they, that they had to take from the north to uh, Capernaum and all of that. So yes, they were arguing about who was the greatest. And, and so Jesus wanted to teach them the lesson of humility and so does that attitude continue to exist in ministry yes can pastors uh, begin to think that they are some great one because they're able to attract crowds yes um, do some very humble pastors have a good size uh, group of people listening to them absolutely and thank God for every pastor who has a heart of a shepherd who actually is is working for the sake of the kingdom but is it possible for pastors to be in competition and to actually inculcate that mentality into their church i've seen plenty of that i've been in ministry for 48 almost 49 years john 
So I've had plenty of opportunities to see the, the, the seed of carnality sown in the hearts of people. And unfortunately, the Lord, uh, the Lord has prohibited that. And Paul made a comment about that when people were beginning to say, I'm of Paul, I'm of Cephas, you know, oh, I'm of Jesus, you know, and I'm of Apollos. And they were, they were giving all the names of the people that they followed after. And, and he said, well, who is Apollos and who is Paul? We're, we're simply bondservants of Christ. We're, we're his slaves, you know. The, the only one who really matters is Jesus. And when you begin to uh, ascribe some kind of greatness or special anointing on, on, on us, on me, or, or Apollos, or the others, um, is that not carnal? Are ye not yet mere men, is how he puts mm. it. So what is, what is one of the evidences of carnality? Um, being man worshipers, being minister worshipers. And so there are some who succumb to that. There are some that actually believe that that is, is what they're actually seeking after, just the way they do their ministry, just the way they speak of themselves, their adventures and those whom they know and the things that they know and things of that nature. It, it has a tendency of causing people to want to associate with this great one. And so, yes, that, that seed is there. How do we respond to it? We endeavor to keep the unity of the body in the in the spirit, in the spirit, of, in God's Holy Spirit. We 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 begin to to just say, you know what? Um, I have a field that God has given to me to 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 work in, and I'm not going to look across the fence to somebody else's field. I I simply want to do what is my assignment and to do it faithfully mm. unto the Lord. And that's the key. And you know, as, as the disciples will come across somebody, and as you'll share on Sunday, was this part of Jesus' lesson for humility when uh, the disciples see another man, it is not identified, just as someone, was casting out demons? Mm -hmm. And I think it was John that says it, yeah, right? Yeah, John says He it. was questioning Jesus, or they were forbidding him. Well, what he was doing is, and I'll make this quick because I don't want to keep the people too long, but what he was doing is basically defending himself because he had heard the Lord's uh, rebuke about wanting to be great and all of that. And so he's basically defending himself against that accusation by kind of like moving it into a different <laughs> direction. You know, I'm a company man, Jesus. You know, I'm, I'm with you I'm, and, and, and all of that. You know, in spite of how you're rebuking me right now, I just want you to know that uh, I'm very faithful to you and this and that. And so the Lord... You know, somebody somebody who is doing a work uh, in my name will not soon speak uh, evil of me. So Jesus says, you're not to forbid them, you're to encourage them, because he obviously has, has, has faith in me. Obviously, though he may not be in my company, he obviously is one of my followers. And so, so instead of forbidding, you ought to be encouraging, because once again, the apostles were supposed to be trainers of those who are to go out and do the work of ministry and if you don't see that these this this one and and there would have been others also is a genuine follower of me because he can't cast out a demon if he's not one of mine you know the, the seven sons of Sceva pointed that out in acts 19 you know when the demon would not listen to them because they didn't know the jesus whom paul preached so he's saying basically they wouldn't be successful uh, he wouldn't be successful if he were not one of mine. So don't forbid him, encourage this. And so, yeah, we need to see that and do that. I do want to invite you guys to come out. This is going to be, a, actually, it's going to be a great study. And want to invite you guys to come out to our 8.30 and 10.45 uh, morning services and, uh, and invite your friends and family. But also we have our, for all those who serve in our church, we have a servant's ministry this Saturday at 9 a.m. Mm -hmm. on the mini chapel. Any of you that serve in any capacity, Come join us. Pastor will give a Devo. We'll have a Q&A. Mm -hmm. We'll have some worship. And it's a great time for the just all the servants to get together and hear your heart. Mm -hmm. So I want to invite you guys to come out and join us. And we do want to, again, remind you Sunday, uh, 1040, 8.30 and 10.45, invite your friends. And Pastor, thank you so much for your time. Look forward to your study. And, uh, and thank you guys for tuning in. One last thing. And one last thing. It, this is for those who are presently serving. This isn't for those who are curious. Because on... On occasion, I've had people just kind of pop in, and this is really for those who are presently serving, 
And so I, I would hope that, uh, that, that those who are presently serving would show up, but those who are not, you know, start serving and then you'll be part of it. You'll be part of it and it'll be a good part. And we have an Israel uh, oh, meeting yes. also on Sunday after second service for those who are going with us to Israel. It's our last meeting to get their information packets, flight information, everything. everything. So I encourage you guys to come out and join us. And Pastor, again, thank you so much for your time. God bless you guys. Thank you for tuning in, and we'll see you on Sunday.